Good morning. Good morning Welcome to our community mass at St. Bernadette's for Tuesday within the octave of Easter. What Sunday is to the week, Easter is to the year, right? We celebrate the resurrection of the Lord. And since the 24 hours can't contain the Lord's Day, that's why it spreads into a vigil the evening before. Not even a week can contain the solemnity of the resurrection of the Lord, so it becomes an octave or eight day, an eight-day week. Today's Mass is offered for the repose of the soul of Helen Bolger. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Brothers and sisters, let us acknowledge our sins and ask our Father in heaven for his forgiveness and his strength. You were sent to heal the contrite of heart. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. You came to call all sinners. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. You are seated at the right hand of the Father to intercede for us. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to people of good will. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you. We glorify you. We give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, heavenly King, O God, Almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, only begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Let us pray. O God, who have bestowed on us in Paschal remedies, endow your people with heavenly gifts, so that possessed of perfect freedom, they may rejoice in heaven over what gladdens them now on earth. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. On the day of Pentecost, Peter said to the Jewish people, Let the whole house of Israel know for certain that God has made him both Lord and Christ, this Jesus whom you crucified. Now when they heard this, they were cut to the heart, and they asked Peter and the other apostles, What are we to do, my brothers? Peter said to them, Repent and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ, for the forgiveness of your sins, and you will receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. For the promise is made to you and to your children, and to all those far off, whomever the Lord our God will call. He testified with many other arguments and was exhorting them, Save yourselves from this corrupt generation. Those who accepted his message were baptized, and about 3,000 persons were added that day. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Alleluia. Alleluia. Upright is the word of the Lord and all his works are trustworthy. He loves justice and right. Of the kindness of the Lord, the earth is full. Alleluia. See, the eyes of the Lord are upon those who fear him, upon those who hope for his kindness, to deliver them from death and preserve them in spite of famine. Alleluia. Our soul waits for the Lord, who is our help and our shield. May your kindness, O Lord, be upon us, who have put our hope in you. Alleluia. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. Alleluia, alleluia. Alleluia. This is the day the Lord has made. Let us be glad and rejoice in it. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. 
A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Glory to you, Lord. Mary Magdalene stayed outside the tomb weeping, and as she wept, she bent over into the tomb and saw two angels in white sitting there, one at the head and one at the feet where the body of Jesus had been. And they said to her, Woman, why are you weeping? She said to them, They have taken my Lord, and I don't know where they laid him. When she had said this, she turned around and saw Jesus there, but did not know it was Jesus. Jesus said to her, Woman, why are you weeping? Whom are you looking for? She thought it was the gardener and said to him, Sir, if you carried him away, tell me where you have laid him, and I will take him. Jesus said to her, Mary. She turned and said to him in Hebrew, Rabboni, which means teacher. Jesus said to her, Stop holding on to me, for I have not yet ascended to the Father. But go to my brothers and tell them, I am going to my Father and your Father, to my God and your God. Mary went and announced to the disciples, I have seen the Lord, and then reported what he had told her. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. So throughout this octave of Easter Sunday, each day we're going to hear another account of how Jesus appeared to his apostles and to, to those he loved. And in the tradition of the church, this octave of Easter is used, these, these are all used as kind of proof texts for the fact that Jesus rose from the dead. Because as you know, you can have an account and just say, well, we don't know who really wrote it. We don't know if it's really true or not. I'll never forget when we were going through this whole thing about the Da Vinci Code, so this is how old I am, but when the Da Vinci Code book came out, I actually had people coming up to me saying, you prove this isn't true. I'm like, well, it's fiction, first of all, right? So if you, even if you think maybe the Gospels are fiction, I challenge you to prove that it isn't true because it, it is, right? And, and there's little aspects of things that you can see in these accounts, which if a person was trying to convince you of something that wasn't true, it would never be in, included. First of all, everybody is surprised, right? Everybody is surprised. They act like they didn't know anything about this. What happened? And she's like, she even sees Jesus and doesn't even know who he is. And she thinks he's a gardener, which is kind of an interesting reference to the Garden of Eden, right? Kind of going back to the first, the first times. But, but God is walking in the garden, right? But he does, she doesn't recognize him. And she's like, if you just tell me where you took him, I'll take him back, you know? So, so if, they, if they were trying to convince people of the veracity of these kinds of accounts, they wouldn't, they wouldn't be couched like this, I don't believe. The people who tell the stories repeatedly state their unworthiness for all of this. That's another reason why this can't be true. They own their betrayal of Jesus before he was crucified. They admit the doubt that they had in all of this. They accepted their own sinfulness. They don't present themselves as being above anyone else. We're all in the same situation, aren't we? The fact that they didn't, the act that they didn't know anything and they admitted that they didn't know anything that they should have known and only remembered these things later, that Jesus had said, it. oh yeah, he said that a while back, I think is a proof, proof enough. But then there's the, the first reading today, and it's the, well, we're already we're 50 days ahead to Pentecost. And I always thought it was kind of strange that Peter just comes out of the upper room and he accuses all of these Jews of crucifying the Lord, and it says immediately they were cut to the heart, right? They were, now, that would not have happened if they hadn't had time to think about what they did. And 50 days of conversation and discussion and reflection, once they're told that they were the ones who crucified Jesus, they converted on the spot and 3,000 people were baptized. It's incredible, really, if you think about it. This is probably one of the most compelling proof texts of all, is that the people who literally crucified Jesus realized that what they had done and... Um, and, and converted and became baptized Christians, followers of Jesus. It's possible that it was good preaching, and it was the power of the Holy Spirit that was behind his words. But there's truth behind the story, and it was not Peter who was the truth, but it was Jesus, and these people knew him firsthand, and they watched him crucified. They heard of the accounts of Jesus' re return, and they believed.
Now let us stand for our prayers of the faithful. First, we pray for all who have inherited the role of proclamation from the first preacher, St. Peter, that with him they may speak the truth boldly and that God may work through them to save his people. We pray to the Lord. We pray for all those who would have been baptized on the Easter Vigil this past Saturday evening, Holy Saturday. We pray that the church may continue to hold them in prayer, that they might at the appropriate time be received into the church through the sacraments of initiation. They will be able to join us in our life, peace, and support of human dignity with all the energy of their newfound joy. We pray to the Lord. For all true lovers of Jesus who, like Mary Magdalene, regard even angelic apparitions as nothing without him, that their persevering and ardent devotion may be rewarded by a sudden encounter with the Lord. We pray to the Lord. Lord, For all the sick, for the poor, for the imprisoned, for all those who need our compassionate intercession, especially those affected by this current crisis, all those who are sick, all those who are suffering loss and risk, that Jesus, risen and victorious, may bring them the grace of their own rising to new life. We pray to the Lord. Lord, For our dear departed, that they may come to their personal meeting with their risen Savior and hear him call each one of them lovingly by name. We pray to the Lord. Lord, And for the intentions that we include in silence. For these we pray to the Lord. Lord, Heavenly Father, every day, every moment, you offer us new life through Christ your Son. Help us to recognize it and to live into it with the kind of energy and love with which he died and rose for us. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you. Fruit of the earth and work of human hands, it will become for us the bread of life. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you. Fruit of the vine and work of human hands, it will become our spiritual drink. Blessed be God. Let us pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands, to the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the belongs to the Church. Accept in compassion, Lord, the offerings of your family, that under your protective care they may never lose what they have received, but attain the gifts that are eternal, through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, at all times to acclaim you, O Lord, but on this day, above all, to laud you yet more gloriously when Christ our Passover has been sacrificed. For he is the true Lamb who has taken away the sins of the world. By dying, he has destroyed our death. By rising, restored our life. Therefore, overcome with paschal joy, every land, every people exults in your praise, and even the heavenly powers with the angelic hosts sing together the unending hymn of your glory as they acclaim, Holy, 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 
Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts by sending down your spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Save us, Savior of the world, for by your cross and resurrection you have set us free. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, We offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly, we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world. Bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, and Michael, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Joseph, her spouse, with the apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope, the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, you said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us offer to one another a sign of peace. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed.
body of Christ. The body of Christ. The body of Christ. Let us pray. Hear us, Almighty God, and as you have bestowed on your family the perfect grace of baptism, so prepare their hearts for the reward of eternal happiness through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. We do have a couple of announcements on a weekday. I know this is highly irregular, but I wanted to let you know of a couple of things that are coming up. This Thursday, we will have, again, Washington Lamb will be delivering food, which you need to order from our website. This is wholesale quality food. They are wholesalers for restaurants in D.C., and they are offering this food at wholesale prices to us. So if you go to our parish website announcements page, you will find not only a, just a flyer, uh, it's between 10 and 2 this Thursday, but it's also, there's also an order form. You need to call in your order in advance so that they can have it ready for you to pick up on Thursday morning. Also very important, we've got two um, appeals, one from ECHO, which is our local ecumenical community helping others. It's, it stands for, it's down here on Old Keen Mill Road. You may have been participating in our Can a Week program every week. Um, if you wouldn't mind, just take that food directly to ECHO. They're receiving food um, during the day. Look on their website, echo.org, to know exactly what their hours are. But if you can drop food down there or... Our Catholic Charities St. Lucy Project will be here at the parish on Friday, April 24th, between 10 and 2, with a truck in the parking lot, and it'll be a no-contact drop-and-go kind of food um, collection because Catholic Charities is in great need of food as well for all the other ministry to the poor. So those are opportunities coming up this Thursday, April 16, to purchase food and pick up your orders, right? You purchase it in advance. And then um, April 24th, Friday, St. Lucy Project. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Our Mass is ended. Go and proclaim the gospel of the Lord. Alleluia, alleluia. Thanks be to God. Alleluia, alleluia. alleluia.